Mark, the bounce of the ball spot for the uh, footy that's played on this ground. So you can see that is the centre. We're off the centre just a little bit here. And today this match will be played on one of the drop-in, well, the only drop-in pitch here. It's a permanent drop-in. This one stays here. It was put in a little while back. But I've got to tell you, it is as hard as a rock. Have a look at the surface. Just have a close-up there. Just look at this. This is incredible. Lovely, even spread of grass. Uh, a few little cracks down the edge, but no chance at all of getting that key through the surface. It's as hard as a rock. There'll be a little bit of carry there. Speaking to uh, Kevin Mitchell Jr. here, he reckons this is almost exactly the same as the sort of pitch you could expect to see during the summertime. So congratulations to the ground staff here at the Gap. Yes, looks an absolute cracker. I wonder what the skippers think. Here they are with Ian Chappell for the toss. Clive, you're happy? Yes, I'm happy. Right here. Where are we going? Good luck, mate. Good luck. Tails, tails. Tails. Well back, mate. You're back. Good luck, yeah. Looks pretty good, the pitch. Yeah, it looks uh, pretty firm and nice and dry, so hopefully lots of runs in it. Not too worried about uh, suggestions there might be some dew later on in the evening? Yeah, but we, we like to uh, bowl without a dew, actually. Mm. We, we rather depends on, the, on a dry ball. Yeah. So we're happy with this, and uh, it's, I think it should be a good toss to win. Yeah. And your injury, what was that uh, the other night? You recovered? Yeah, I have recovered. I uh, had a little uh, hamstrings, just had a little cramps, and it's fine. And, and, and in Zabam, he's 100% fit as well? Yeah, he's fine. He's, uh, he's, we had a long nap yesterday, and uh, he was playing magnificent. Yeah. Good comeback in the second game after losing the first one? Yes, uh, we really needed it, and uh, we have come back well, and I'm uh, very pleased with it. Yeah, yeah I didn't, doesn't, don't think it really matters what we did today, battle ball first, whatever you do, you have to do it well. Yeah, actually might turn out to be a bit of a blessing. Uh, they say there might be some dew around later on, it might be tough for the bowlers in the evening. It could be, yeah, I was actually going to bowl first today anyway, I just thought there might have been a little bit of life in the wicket, and um, with the rain and that coming later on, might, might play into our hands as well, so... Uh, yeah, all in all, looks like a good wicket, and we're looking forward to the game. Yeah. Selectors feel that uh, this is the strongest side, obviously? Yeah, I think so, yeah. This is obviously the, the same side that we played in the first game, and we think it's our strongest side at the moment. Yeah. All right, uh, good luck in this one, then. Thanks, mate. All right. Well, Kar Yunus has uh, won the toss, and uh, Pakistan will be batting first. Oh, he plays, he misses a bit of outswing. Wide delivery. Yes, that's a very tentative shot, uh, first up. What a bowler McGraw is. Look at him, straight on a length and line. First delivery. One out of one beats the batsman. And it's for that reason that he's got three slips in there. 156 matches and, uh, well, an average of 23. And he's conceding at 35 runs per 100 balls. Correction, that's his strike rate. Uh, runs per over for nearly four. So it me he's off the mark. Yes, it's interesting just to dwell on that for a second. Uh, they're, they're apparently in this um, Australian team now is, uh, uh, the, well, this view that you've really got to keep uh, the um, runs per over, the runs conceded to under four runs and over. Now, there is a surprise. There'll be a lot of you uh, wondering why that man's not playing. Brett Lee sitting up there uh, not in the best 12. We're uh, informed that the best 12 are playing in this match. Brett Lee is uh, not playing. He didn't play in the first match. You've heard that um, Ponting and Buchanan and co have been talking to him about trying to be a little bit more economical. They've gone for Bickle today instead. Bickle uh, having played all three matches in uh, this tournament. And what? Cuts in the air but safely. Single down to third man. So he's off the mark. Nicely played, this time it's square. Outfield not quick. It goes all the way or does it? That's a interesting one. This makes a late dive. Because it looked as if um, it rolled into something. Perhaps it was, was his arm before it hit the rope. But SB seems pretty confident. He's uh, trotting away. That's fine. Unless he touches it now. No, he doesn't. That's fine. Very well done. Just a little bit of inconsistent bounce out there. I think that's why they're having their problems. Looks a very hard pitch, but uh, 
perhaps early on we're going to see a bit of that notice that last shot stayed down to steer it away it's handy that's through the gap it's against Pickle Beelsman good over from Pakistan six runs conceded none for ten it's fine Lehman the fieldsman doesn't get it. That's the first boundary as in Chapel and here we take up the country. Just going to clear uh, mid on. Quite out of the middle of the bat. That's the longest boundary on the field, almost the longest. There's probably square of the wickets, just a touch longer, but short of a length, Gillespie to the right-hander. Just a little too short. The flip pull shot it was a good one by Nazir. Thought it was going to go for four, and then struggled through for three in the end. Good shot. That's one of his great strengths, Said Anwar, the onside. You only have to get on middle stump and he'll play this shot. In the past, there's been a man placed at backward square catching for this shot. And that's middle and leg worked fine. The fine leg had gone to the left of screen to cover for the one that hit the middle of the bat. But just the inside edge was enough to power it for four on that short boundary. Andy Pickle must be off stump, no straighter. Off stump and outside. this man for just a wristy back foot cover drive back foot's much more effective playing through there than he is on the front foot McGrath just dropped it in a little bit short but he pounced there's a gap left there for the shot but the shot is supposed to be off the front foot just under three runs per over that'll boost it a little bit on that occasion Imran Nazir doesn't run and he doesn't have to it's a brilliant shot a little bit wide Andy Bickle and he pounces on it been critical of him not doing this to every delivery he gets and now they seem to have the pressure on Bickle like they haven't for Gillespie and McGrath now Andy Bickle has to respond and that man has to keep doing it it's now turned into a solid start none for 41 Good shot, little flick of the wrists. A couple of boundaries uh, to start this over. That's exactly what Pakistan need now to uh, get a bit of a move on. Good solid base. This is third four, half volley on leg stump. And gets it in the middle. Minimum of effort and no trouble reaching the rope. up might sound like a strange comment to say that uh, he just reacts to every ball because people tell you that you just got to play every ball on its merits but you do need to have a bit of a, a game plan in a game plan in mind and I never feel with Imran that he does have a bit of a game plan Awful. Well, it's dangerous. Lucky Shane Watson got that past the batsman because fine leg is up. It's time now for Andy Bickles. A little bit expensive. As he was at the start of his spell in the first game on Wednesday, Shane Watson has to get it together this end. And, of course, Pakistan want to try to go both. Another wide call. So what happened with Shane Watson when you let get away, you Queenslanders? Well, it was, a, it was good for cricket, I think, and good for Watto, definitely, that he left. Uh, Tasmania spotted him at the academy in South Australia. He wasn't, at the time, in the Queensland State squad. 
and so they they made him an offer to come to Tasmania and it's been unbelievably good for him now Imran Nazir has missed three there the two wides okay got away with that then the third one which he should have been ready for should have had the balance together he still missed it and it didn't get called it was a probably should have been called wide there's a man in a catching mid wicket ball could be flipped either side of him or over him for plenty of runs but Watson cannot control the inswing. swing this time he finds the gap on the offside Shane Watson uh, trying to make an adjustment get away from the legs and Nazir got his front foot out to this one on the move and worked it into the gap that's good play both Bickle and Watson under pressure. Six off this over so far. One ball remains. That's a good shot. He likes the full shot. Now that's another good over for Pakistan. They move to none for 56 after 15. Fine. Aaron Lehman's the man. Won't get there. Down is also playing for side and one now. Going sides for Australia, Mark. Good afternoon, Mark and viewers. Pakistan looked a bit nervous early. The ball got past the bat a number of times, but they got away with it. Now the ball's a bit softer. That shines off the ball. Looks a pretty good batting wicket. Not a lot of bounce, not a lot of pace. That'll suit the Pakistani batsman. been an intention on the batting side of things out there they've definitely targeted Bickle and Watson Pakistan openers McGrath and Gillespie did well 12 overs between them for only 29 runs there Bickle is into his third over he's already gone for 23 Watson one over for 10 put his down on the accelerator for Pakistan Having uh, opened the batting pretty recently in one day cricket, um, always discussed with Adam Gilchrist that the first five or six overs were the hardest for a batsman. Once you get through those five or six overs, then it does get easier. Particularly when you've got your two class bowlers opening the bowling. Follow up bowlers, as good as they are, will probably always be easier than the opening bowlers. Feels me up there, gets there. And then Mark is the man. Keep that for two. Oh, he's here. Looks a good player to me. Economy of foot movement. Keeps his head fairly still. Times the ball exceptionally. No doubt the Australians have said that using the series as part of their build-up for the World Cup for next year. I'm sure this is one position they've looked very closely at. The battle between Brett Lee, Andrew Bickle and Jason Gillespie. I don't think any of them have cemented their spot in this one-day side at this stage. Look at those figures there of Bickle. He's gone to 44. One's probably over 4.6, so he goes for slightly less than Brett Lee. A lot less wickets from a very similar amount of games. I disagree slightly there, Mark. I think Jason Gillespie is a standout bowler. I think he's been Glenn McGrath picked themselves. Look at Brett Lee's figures. Better strike rate, runs per over slightly higher. They're two different types of bowler. Brett Lee, more attacking bowler, will get you wickets. Andy Bickle can probably do that, but he's more attuned to tying at one end. Circus shot, that'll go all the way. Just over the rope for six. Once again, just short of a length from Watson. Everyone is here, quickly onto the back foot. Once again, that timing is superb. 
great shot. Um, shortish, probably halfway down. Not a lot of bounce in the pitch, and that enabled Imran Nazir to have great control over the shot and great power. Missed out a couple on the leg side the previous over, but not this time. The two on this occasion. And was keen to come back. But his partner, Side Anwar, who's not running to the danger end, didn't want it. Here's the six again. Just a short arm jab, really. Very wristy player when he's on the front foot in Randers here. It's short, he tends to lock that back arm. He was keen for two. His partner, very happy so far, just sit with the one. Strike in the air. This should be caught. Brett Lee has dropped it. Well, it fell awkwardly in between about three or four fields, but Brett Lee got there. And I suppose at the end probably should have caught it. Come back and have a look at that after the break. 17 overs, none for 74, Pakistan. Starts with a full toss. It's nicely played. Nazir didn't try to hit it too hard. Just used the pace of the ball. Picks up yet another boundary. Certainly do need a wicket, Australia. Pakistan upping the ante considerably. Real looser from Shane first up there. Imran Nazir probably could have hit that anywhere he'd like, like to, but he found a gap. Fine leg and tucked it away nicely. Those fingers might be a little bit stiff and tight from Warney. Taking him a couple of overs, a couple of balls at least to warm those up. Straight to first slip. That's 53 runs in the last 6.2 overs. That's why Shane Warne's on. And also a drop catch. Well, I say catches can win matches. Certainly lose your matches if you don't take those chances when they come. Looked like it was going to fall safe. Brett Lee made good ground got there but put it down you need to take those chances when they come that'll be 50 Imran Nazir that was exceptionally well played 50 from only 57 deliveries 5 fours and a 6 after a slow start then runs from only 53 balls at one stage and is now right on top Excellent innings from Imran Nazir. Probably have a few more runs too if Saeed Amwar had run a little harder. But he's striking the ball very nicely. Looks comfortable. Wicket's playing nice and steady for the batsman. Here's that chance. Saeed Amwar looking for the pull. Spliced it pretty much in the gap. Brett Lee made good ground. Unfortunately, he put it down. Just come on the field that over. Over before and... Fortunately for Shane Watson, it went down. That's wide. It could well be four wides. It has beaten everyone. Yes. Wide signal by Russell Tiffin, so that will be five wides. It's into the gap. One, one bounce and over the rope. So, Imran Nazir certainly has put his foot down. Hit a six not that long ago. Now a pull shot first ball we over. Now that's really just a slog. Over wide mid on. Straight in the gap and boundary number six. I'd say it was a slog, but I think kept his head pretty still. Yeah, he did. Shane Watson just angling into leg stump. Hitting with the angle of the ball. Kept his head still, that was the important thing. There. He won't get it on this occasion. Seven from the over though. 93 without loss. Oh! That's beauty. Oh, I thought just watching it live that Shane Warne was only making an inquiry of Russell Tiffin. There's nothing from behind the stumps, nothing from Gilchrist for the man at first slip, Darren Lehman. Russell Tiffin liked it. Side Amwar's on his way. Well, not a lot of turn there. Pretty much out of the front of the hand, I think. With a slip passed off stump, no doubt about it. It's a good breakthrough, though, for Australia. 
Anwar departs, I think, very unluckily. I think he's out LBW. He's out for 26. Pakistan, one for 94. Yusuf Bihana, new player. And he at number three for Pakistan. A good average, a tick under 40. Strike rate of around about 70. That's a great shot. That's gone way in the air, and it'll go all the way for six. Magnificent hit down the ground, over the top of the side screen. Six all the way. He's only a small player, Imran Naz here, but he's a very powerful little player. Good timer of the ball. That one, uh, he's cleared the front, the, the first row, and up onto the second level, just by the side of the sideboard, where they've got the uh, all the black uh, covering there as an adjunct to the sideboard. That's very, very well hit. Cut. Oh, that's out. That's out. They do persist uh, with this little sweep shot. They play it a lot, and uh, this time... Imran Nazir, who uh, really has flirted with it uh, in all three matches, well, he's uh, done once too often. Not really a percentage shot. The fieldsman is there. You can't see where you're going to get a lot of runs, and you're giving yourself giving yourself a chance of getting out. Darren Lehman has picked up a wicket, caught by his fellow spinner Shane Warne. And the end of a very good innings from Imran Nazir. It's two for 108. Two for 108, 22.4 overs. Uh, the best batsman in this lineup, Inzamam Al Haq, is out there now. Oh. Make sure that uh, he doesn't throw his wicket away. Now that's a nasty one for Darren Lehman. He's got an awkward bounce. The players are calling for somebody from the dressing room immediately. Eric Alcott. Errol Alcott is uh, is coming out. Looked like it might have hit him very close to the eye. Okay, just have a look at the reaction here of the Australian uh, players. Uh, this was, uh, as far as they were concerned, a huge nick with the face there of uh, Gilchrist. And then Warren comes into play and Ponting. He did that time, tossed it up a bit more, back for the second here, and, oh, a good throw there, would have had Inzamam uh, stretching a little bit, that's what they're going to do, no, no, oh, they've done it in the past, they'll do it again today, keep throwing it at Inzamam's end. Not the strongest arm uh, from the outfield, Jason Gillespie. Interesting to see there, Bill, both wickets so far falling to sweeps, yep. Excellent match will continue to play them. And really, this is a good pitch. The ball's coming on. They look at their best for the heading down the ground. We saw him, uh, Imran Nazir early on hit a six off Shane Warne back in the first tier of the grandstand at the Stanley Street end. That seems to be the play. Hit down the ground, use the pace on the ball. I think they're all laughing at it because it was Inzman Al-Haq, the big man who went up, fell over there and trying to sweep Warne. We just slip down he goes and Inzi's all over the place. Shane Warnfield it was very funny. I'm not sure about Inzman, but he survives. Three off the over, two for one, two nine. Ah, so Chris giving him. Inzman not very far forward. He's in line. Big appeal from Warren by Tiffin, had no hesitation whatsoever. Maybe the top spinner, Inzman just coming a fraction forward, was in line. That's out. No doubt about that one, that's Plum. Yes, my decision. Great piece of bowling, caught Inzamam on the crease. I really know whether they come forward or back, then Inzamam or Huck, caught on the crease and caught Plum by Shane Warne. Good week for Australia, Warne's got two, Australia got three for 133. Was calm, man of the match. The last clash, Colonial Stadium, 24 years of age. Reasonable strike, that's early days for him yet, 51 matches. High score, 73. That's got him! That's a big wicket and a good bowling change. Very good delivery. Good line, plenty of bounce, and Wilkes takes the catch. It's a good comeback by the Australians. Four for 136. 
superb piece of bowling and great capacity. Thank you, Potty. Martin was starting to go for a few runs. He brings back one of his strikers. First ball's quick and short. Second one, Eunice Khan on the crease. Simple outside edge straight through to Adam Gilchrist. Australia right back in the match. Pakistan four for 136. Strike and he immediately punches him through cover for one. I guess from the Pakistan point of view, we've got to go after Andy Bickle. His first spell three overs, none for 26. The last man out was Yunus Khan and Gillespie was a bowl and it was a beautiful delivery. First to bounce and this one hit the pitch, seam up, good carry, genuine nick through to Gillespie. That's good bowling. They soft him up with a short one. First ball, I was a bit wide. That one was right in the channel, on or about off stump. Excellent piece of captaincy. Good bowling change. Saw that Damien Martin was all well, looking to get after Damien Martin with Eunice Khan and Yusuf Yohana. Brought back one of his strike bowlers. Second ball gets the wicket. There's a warm feeling for the captain. Must be in good form. Good tour of South Africa along with McGrath. It's a good genuine nick through to Lucas as well. Oh, it's a big noise again. Maybe the pound on this occasion. He's getting him after a long time. He waited a long, long time for that decision, umpire. Tiffin, the batsman's not happy. Throws the bat in and catches it. He thought it was a pat, I think. It's been an interesting replay. Why Tiffin waited a long time. So did Rush the team after he was given out. Long pause between the noise. There certainly was a noise. I think it might be bat hitting pad. That, that replay suggests to me that might be bat hitting pad. Rush the teeth certainly didn't think he edged the ball. He stood his ground. Russell Tiffin, well, he thinks immediately almost that he's given him. He's out. Up goes the finger. The teeth slowly off the ground. Australia got five wickets now. 139 on the board. That's an move, the new batsman. Pickets on the boss three for six. Middle order collapse here at the Gabba. gone Andy Bickle held his mind he didn't throw the ball as Mahmood slipped over Bickle great presence of mind as Mahmood gone he won't happen to face Shane Warne he's run out for six good mix up can't complain about decisions there slippery surface to Gabba we've seen batsmen slip over when they played their sweep shots if you do have a mix up with the calling there's no getting back as Mahmood well out of his ground Mood run out for six off 12 balls. Pakistan six for 153 in the 38th over. Shahid Afridi in for Pakistan. He's certainly down the wicket. How's that gone? It's gone straight and straight over the first side screen into the second one. The rubbers have worked. Look at those shoes. Tremendous shot. He's right, he's got plenty of grip there, took my advice, hit it one-handed as well. And that's the strike power he's got. He makes some hundreds and he makes them quickly. The pressure's off now, he knows he's only got 11 overs to bat for. And down the wicket, about two metres to hit that. Hard enough getting two metres down, let alone hit it for six. Wider one by Warren. Maybe he thinks it's his night, Adam Gilchrist. Very rare miss. He thinks it could be his night to make a few. Here's his footwork and those those rubbers. One to two. Away she goes. Who needs spikes heels? Nothing happening. There's another slip. He's in the rubbers. Yeah. He hasn't had to slip this time because he's been run out. A huge mix-up. Ponding bounces. Well, often said, Pakistanis out cricket, it's fielding and it's running between wickets. Can let them down. Certainly has let them down here tonight. A couple of major mix-ups. Probably one there. Yusuf Yohana said no when Afridi was halfway down the wicket. Didn't matter what shoes he had on. Could have had skates on, he wouldn't have made it. Shahid Afridi run out 
Ricky Ponting, 14 off 11 deliveries. Pakistan in big trouble. 7 for 168. Well, that's a good shot. There's no one behind Square. Glenn McGrath has been in front of Square in the hope that Bickle could keep it on off stump, short of a length, but he strayed, and what a great shot. Sitting beautifully through cover. Eight runs off the over. Good one for Pakistan. 44 gone. Seven for 191. There's an excellent strike. So beautifully to deep cover. Into the gap. And happy with two. Well, we've talked about uh, bowling this evening whether it might be difficult because of a bit of dew around. Now, Ponting made the throw there. He always expects to hit the stumps. You see him afterwards, he's just saying something to the, to the bowler, or one of the other fieldsmen. Not sure, he might be saying that there was a bit of dew on the ball. In the air, should be out. And he is. That's well caught. It's a big wicket. The captain takes the catch. No ball being called a square leg. Wow, well, what about that? Umpire top, of course, no ball. Superbly caught by Ricky Ponting. That's a big hit. That's going a long, long way. That's superbly struck over mid off. Now, this is a big over for Pakistan, just at the right time. Well, there's not much backlift there with Wazim Akram. Terrific follow through though. That's, that one has come right off the middle of the bat. Brett Lee knew immediately that there was only one place to go there and that was back to the rope. When he got to the rope, he realised that there was no chance. That was headed up into the uh, the first few rows of the stand. 17 runs off the over so far. Gone again, and this is further. This is over long one. Way, way, way back she goes. 23 off the over. Superb hitting by the former captain at the 49 and 7 for 242. Well, that's nicely played into the gap at backward point. That's running down the hill. Could well get there. There's going to be a dive. Again, giving himself a little bit of room and uh, finding the gaps. That's what he's it's almost like uh, Michael Bevan in the late overs. Just have that happy knack with finding the gaps. That was the slower delivery from Jason Gillespie. It's nicely chipped. Two more. This is a very good recovery. They were seven for 168. What a strike, Pakistan. He calls it wide. Pushed it down the back, so he went across the right to the offside. But it was certainly angled down that, that way. So this is a very good finish by Pakistan. Gillespie was trying to uh, do something a little different. He went a bit wider on the crease. He's changed his run up a little bit, came in on a greater angle, and also went wide on the crease. I think trying to uh, do something to negate the fact that Yusuf Yohana was moving to offside. Unfortunately for the bowler, went down leg side. So one ball remaining. This was an Aquaman strike. Chipped it nicely away and it could well go for four. What a superb innings from was an Aquaman. He has played all the shot in the book. And after 50 overs, was an Aquaman goes to 50. Of just 32 deliveries. Pakistan are 7 for 256. It's a wonderful effort there from Pakistan. Wekar Yunus will be more than happy after winning the toss and electing the bat. Seven for 256 in the 50 overs. Mark, 
a very good start by Pakistan. I'd say a shocker in the middle, but an excellent finish. It's been a bit that way with the middle order. It hasn't been good for them all series, but they did the job at the top after winning the toss. I was surprised when they did win the toss and elect to bat first. I thought they would have bowled as they did in game two. They batted first. Nazir, Imran Nazir at the top there played superbly. And uh, Said Amway was a good ally for him. I thought Amway was unlucky. LBW to Shane Warne. Uh, one for 98 there at that stage. Yohana did well, though he was involved in a couple of runouts, but things didn't really go well for Pakistan in that middle order. A couple of bad shots, a couple of runouts, and a couple of decisions went against them. It was an Akram at the end there. 50 off 32 deliveries. He has given them what, well, it should be a winning score, but this is a very good pitch. Should be a great finish. Oh, beautiful delivery. First up again. That uh, wasn't far off uh, the delivery that got him out. Didn't quite swing as much. Probably quite swing as much and also not quite the same amount of bounce. And that's what we were talking about with this pitch. Still be that swing with this white ball and, and the lights here at the Gabba. May not be quite the same amount of bounce. Just a little bit there and uh, Gilchrist not happy uh, with, well, I think it's probably some movement behind Wazim Akram there. There's something that he's not entirely happy about. Probably a bit of reflection coming off one of those uh, boards down there. That'll be my guess. That's offline and nicely played by Gilchrist. He'll get to... That's the delivery that uh, Wazim Akram is going to try and avoid bowling. Anything straight. It was uh, very difficult to swing it once it starts and around about that next stump. Keeps going. Nicely played. So good just off the mark. It's uh, just wide of mid on, so Hayden is off the mark as well. His first run as a father, Matthew Hayden. Just now in game two. The Super Challenge Series to be with his wife Kelly. Gave birth to their first child, a baby girl, seven pound five on Sunday. Grace Kelly, baby's name. So congratulations to the Haydens. Great news. Martin, Lehman, Bevan, all really good players. Oh, that's close, very close. A little inside edge and past the stumps, down to the boundary for four. That's unlucky. Unlucky for the bowler. There's no luck at all for Wacker Evans. He kept the ball up. Ball swinging into the left-handed Gilchrist. Didn't go forward. Received. Just missing leg stump. That's the interesting thing about Wakar. He's always up there. He always gives himself a, a chance to bowl the batsman out or trap him up with W. Very poor and fast. Oh, he loves that shot. It's gone all the way, has it? Just short, I think. Yeah, bouncing away over the boundary for four. Matty Hayden loves to play the pull shot. And he got stuck right into that one and just taken it away to the boundary. No wicket, free left. Ah! Oh, that's close. That's got to be close. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. He's gone. Well, he's struck. One just got the feeling that went the other way a little bit, didn't it? He was playing down the line of, uh, well, just outside off stump. And uh, it seemed to me to just nick, uh, just nip back inside. Now, I don't think he got any bat on that. He's shaking his head a little bit. Let's see if we can pick anything up here. Yeah, well, he just pulled his leg back a little bit, didn't he? Um, and took his wide time, and then up goes the finger. Yeah, I think that looked very adjacent, of course, unless he got some bat on it. And, uh, well, it didn't seem like it. So the end of Matthew Hayden, and uh, a big wicket for Pakistan, 1 for 17. Ricky Ponting, the new batsman, the Australian captain in uh, these one-day internationals. Lots of uh, matches under his belt. Good strike rate, good average. The combination there is fantastic. 41, average 
average over 40, you're doing really well, and then to strike at over 70, that makes it even better. However, that man will see to it that uh, he earns his runs tonight. Very, very nearly taken. Beautifully fielded, one-handed at the end of the day, it almost carried. Splitting edge here. Gilchrist is trying to work the ball on the leg side just to come off a little bit slower. It might have been a slower ball. Not going to Eunice, but almost back to the bowler. He did well. Once again, Eunice and Akram working well in tandem. The bowling for Pakistan for many years together. They did very well in the Super Challenge Series. who's been keeping it tight Mozzie Macman has been picking up the wickets did it again today Matthew Hayden was the man to fall kept a little bit low mind I think that's a pretty fair decision he is forward but their way forward we'll see him just hold its line and if anything kept down fractionally so it wasn't going over the top I the thing that may have worried Matthew Hayden and the reason he looked a little bit disappointed was that he was a fair way down the pitch line and the height to me look pretty good. He looked all right to me as long as he didn't nick it. Oh! There's the call there very quickly. This is the OBW again. Just uh, just watch this. Be close to the ball and uh, a plead there from Wazzy Macram and up goes the finger eventually. <laughs> yes, he kept going until he saw movement. Solomon Telfer's hand come out of his pocket. That's when he started the pumps with the arms. Bonding goes well through mid wicket. Be looking for three. No support. Hasn't been a lot of swing. It's been a very good batting pitch. Here, coming hard at the ball, working nicely into the gap. There's been a bit of slippage on the pitch surface. It's best to be running off under the greener grass and more lush areas. Maka Yunus just getting on off stump and Ricky Ponting working him through mid wicket. Need to starve him of those sorts of shots and then try for the LBW chance. Again, this is a little bit like Ben McGrath. He's stump to stump. He's looking to bowl you out all the time. Very full in length. It's a lot of LBW involved decisions. This one just angling in a fraction, but nice and straight. Quite looking good in defence. That's a great line, Bill. One stump width outside off stump. Just short of a length, so push Ponting back onto the back foot. He can't work it easily through that mid wicket gap that's been left for him. There's two slips. There's three on the leg side. And it's gone. It's one for 30. Oh, cracking shot. It was a bad delivery, but that's a perfect time. Up the back foot through cover. What a magnificent strike of the ball he is. And this is pressure. He knows the bowler's trying something. Is this one going to be the double bluff? And it was, I thought. He was trying to dig it in and get him playing the hook shot when he left the gap there for him. But he was good enough under that sort of pressure to play a cut shot out of the middle of the bat. That makes the bowling side's captain unhappy because he was up to what the bowler had to dish up. It's good if he fired the football before. Nice time. Slip, well taken. Quicker again, 152. Quickest of the series. 
And you can see this time Ricky Ponning wanting to come forward, but his foot not moving. The whole balance is coming forward. The head leaning over, but his front foot won't go. And so he has to try and stay and hit it from where he is. Hence the mistiming, even though it's quite low. Might be some variable bounce here, but so far it's been great. Big Talked about in-swing. Don't worry about the old ball. I can do it with the new one too. Not only with good pace, 151 k's. It swings in and it's right on the mark of middle and off. Ricky Ponting looking to play his favourite shot without the footwork we've been talking about. Tough job. Joe Bakka, magnificent for his captain. Ponting gone for 14, 2 for 44. <laughs> Damien Martin, nine strikers end, a buzz around the gather. Lucaston 20, he's facing Mikey Eunice. Very good record there for Damien Martin, and yet to play well tonight. Well, when you're a captain, you make a change. You're wanting the first chance ball to do something. Shire back to, was magnificent. It was a quick over, 151 k's, and he's gone right through Ricky Pony. He's right on the mark. That's almost like McGrath. First over into the attack. Big off cutter in swinger. Ricky Ponning looking to play his favourite shot through mid wicket, mid on. The head goes. He knows he's missed it, and he's heard the stumps. Great first over. Pressure on Madden Gilkis now. Who... Oh, that's the question. His overthrows, at least one, looked to me as if Gilkis was safely home. But they're applying the screws. Pakistan, worth a shy, hit the timber. Good pressure by Pakistan, as Bill Laurie said. He wasn't on his heels, he was anticipating the quick single. Performed the skill exactly the way he wanted it leave the rest up to the third umpire. All players are happy to stay where they are. They're not confident at all, the Pakistan team. Maybe they should be, because he's gone. Wow, that is a surprise, isn't it? That is a big wicket. That could well be the end for Australia. Gilchrist gone, run out, and a magnificent piece of fielding. They're on fire, Pakistan. A great over, and then a big run out. Well, we have to laugh, don't we? It's a magnificent piece of fielding. Even better piece of fielding if it's out, but it's the same piece. Gilchrist caught on the crease to play the shot. Fielder on the front foot. Great throw. Just backing up the good work that has been started by his bowlers. Great support. The players, this is one for technology, isn't it? The players thought home. Three for 44. Darren Lehman comes to the crease. Australia in a lot of trouble. Three for 44. Yusuf Yohana brings off a big run out. Nicely played. Beautifully played. Through mid wicket. Three. 12 overs, 3 for 50. first balls always the most dangerous for a batsman and fortunately Darren Lehman hasn't got past the first one just walked across his stumps and shot back to right on target again tremendous bowling <laughs> Michael Bevan Pretty good player to be coming in, averaging 56 one day cricket. It's nicely into the gap. Good way to start for uh, Michael Bevan, off the mark with a boundary. 
ball for 57 after 14. Oh, that was quick and it really took off. Straight up over the keeper's head. No chance. Well played by uh, Damien Martin. He kept his eye on it. Got his head out of the way very quickly. Not sure what the change of ball was. Maybe it's a white Super Bowl. Unbelievable delivery. On a wicket where there's not a lot of bounce or pace. Shoal back there has got one to fly. Straight over Damien Martin's right shoulder. Straight over Rashid Latif's head and gloves. Pretty reminiscent of Tomo in his heyday. Ben, I would have thought that delivery. Yes, you asked Rodney Marsh. He had a few fly over his head like that. And that's gone over the top of the slips, off the edge. Looked to be intentional. Bakhtar thought he would repeat the previous delivery. That one, not quite the same pace or bounce. Good shot, Damien Martin. Just waited on it. Pretty good shot at the whack of that one, and Damien Martin, quite accustomed to playing that sort of shot. And played it easy, waited for it, opened the face of the bat, let the pace of the ball do the rest. Captain Waka Yunus is off the field at the moment. Mohamed Sami is the... Uh Substitute fielder. Chance at third man. And he's caught. Said Anwar down at third man. A full-blooded cut from Damien Martin, but he has a tendency not to get over the top of them. And it's carried all the way to third man. Pretty similar to the two previous balls, that one. Short. A little bit wider, this one. Damien Martin through the kitchen sink at it looking for power rather than direction unfortunately for Damien Martin it went straight to Saeed Anwar and he's just hung on to it didn't know much about it it stayed in there unfortunately for Australia Damien Martin out for 11 Australia in big trouble 5 for 65 in the 15th over Shane Watson is the new batsman for Australia Scoring shots for Michael Bevan, both of them boundaries. The other worrying thing for Australia about uh, show back there, as we see as a Mahmood doing exactly what Mark Wall was talking about earlier on, trying to bowl too quick and just pulled it down short. Oh, that's four. It's a very, very good delivery. Batsman didn't have much control over that one. It was a magnificent delivery. It's unbelievable pace and bounce. It's anybody who can bowl quicker than that, uh, I'd like to see him, but that's just taken off. That is, if Rashid Latif stood on first of shoulders, he might have been a chance of getting a glove on that. Unbelievable delivery. If he gets that straight. That's a good shot. Chase for Afridi. was almost 154 miles an hour. It's 5 for 80 after 17. A bit of an outside edge. Rashid Latif takes that one. No footwork again. Shower back there lands it exactly where it needed to be to pinch the outside edge. Great bowling by Shabakta and uh, his colleagues recognise it as well. Just outside off stump, slightly further up and uh, well he's got the danger man out. Bevan out caught behind for 10 off the bowling of Shabakta. This is how it happened. Look at him. No, he's, look at his left foot. He's way, way uh, towards the leg side there and uh, well he knows it's an important wicket that one. It's the end of Bevan and uh, almost the end of Australia. Shane Warne comes into the fire. He thought he was tiring and the pace was dropping. Think again. Oh, inside edge this time. The catch up cramped. Inside edge. Four. There's uh, plenty of frustration out there for everybody. 
Watson's getting frustrated because he can't get a Freedy away. Freedy uh, finds the inside edge close to the stumps it was. Just watch this. Uh, you see he's standing way outside of stuff. He just changed his guard and there's the inside edge. The further he goes across there, he's going to cramp the cut shot and take it out of his repertoire. He wants to play the cut. He possibly needs to get that back foot moving less. On the front foot this time, big shout. He looks outside the line. Tiffin agrees. 20 overs of excitement done. Six for 88. It's an edge to third man. If the turn was a field, he's not that quick. It's a well run. Well, they've served up this way, haven't they? In the second game against at the Colonial Stadium. They served it up and done it again tonight. They've been very positive. If the hunter comes up on the six. Well, bowling's always been aggressive. You look at their attack, they've got Shab Akhtar, Wazim Akram, Waka Yunus, and even Azam Mood. he's an attacking bowler. So they've got the firepower in their attack, and if they have it on night, they can certainly knock sides over. And tonight, Australia have really struggled against that pace attack. And with the bat, they played aggressive, and even in the field, you just see that energy levels nice and high. Well played. Tempted Yorker and the Williams chipped away nicely. Pick up two more. Four off the over, 25 gone, six for 103. Oh, for two, that's wide. A deep point. When he hit that, there was two. There's a man out at point. Through, that's four. Ryan, Ryan finds a gap. Good shot. It's a backward point. Short third man. Split the gap. Australia to make a charge in this game. It's got to be now. Shahida Freedy. They've both had a good look at him, Shane Warne and Shane Watson. They're going to have any chance of winning this game. They've got to make a bit of a run at it. I think now's the time. I think Shane Warne, very, very impulsive sort of batsman. Once he gets on a bit of a roll, he likes to play his shots. And I wouldn't be surprised if it's over. He's playing his shots. Well, he's dropped it. He's dropped it. That was straightforward. At this level, Eunice Khan should be catching those. I knew, I tell you, that uh, Watson really has been trying to get a pull shot away. At last, he's got a bit of bat on ball here. You should expect those caught, but you're quite right, Tony. This was well struck. Much better shot from Shane Watson, who I think has been trying to play too square the wicket. He's going to play a lot of cut shots, a lot of dabs down the third man. A very strong man, plays at his best when he's hitting through the ball, as he did on that occasion. I hope that from an Australian point of view that Shane Watson doesn't get put off by that drop chance that's the way he's got to play oh, he hit that one but uh, it deflected off the keeper's gloves probably a big uh, a big deflection yes on that I suppose the, the question really is uh, will he ever be as good as Simons with the bat the answer to that is probably no or as dangerous should I say as Simons although Simons hasn't really taken his opportunities and uh, can he be as effective in one day cricket as uh, Harvey with the ball? Well, the answer there is probably, yeah, possibly. Oh! Well, he's dragged that back onto the stump, so that's the end of that. Well, he's uh, got a wicket at last. Uh, he's bowled, well, he's sent to his ninth over now. That's his first wicket, one for 30 to Afridi. And uh, unfortunately, you, know, you would have to say now that uh, Australia heading for trouble. Worn out of the bowl. lucid deliveries. It was wider. Probably a little bit slower to be fair to him. And the change of pace to see Shane Maud. He dragged it back on the stump. So one leg spin up, picks up another. Shane Maud departs for 31. 7 for 140 Australia. Andrew Bickle is the new batsman. As uh, Mark Taylor has said, he's got some runs in county cricket just lately. Can he do it at this level?
One ball to go in this over. Shahid Afridi completing his ninth. And uh, that one beats the outside edge of the bat. So two runs at a wicket and off that over. And um, the man that he got out, Shane Warne. Drag one back onto the stumps for 31 or 54 balls. Just helped settle the innings a little bit. Nice uh, partnership there between Watson and Warne. That's in the air and this will be caught. Sharp's got him. Yes, caught down there. Now Freddy is enjoying this. It's taken him a long time to get a wicket tonight. But uh, here he is now in his last over and he's picked up his second. He's getting all his rewards at the end. The rewards that he's due. He's bowled particularly well. He's into his 10th over. He has 30 runs against him. And now he has two wickets. Second one, one of Bickle. And once again, it's the sweep shot. And this good, bouncy pitch here. Gabba. That's not been the shot that's brought about a lot of runs today. It's brought about a number of dismissals, including Andy Bickles, who departs without scoring. Australia now slumped to 8 for 142. Well, 8 down now for 142, and Jason Gillespie is the new man in. It's a bit of a price on his wicket. He doesn't like to, uh, to get out, tends to... Uh, well, he's pretty useful. His defence is pretty useful, should I say. It's, it becomes a little bit more interesting when he's trying to play some shots. Interesting to see how he does about things this evening. Oh, that's beautifully bowled. Oh, yes, he's got him. Five for Shoab, right up there in the block. Oh, a magnificent delivery. Shoab actor back into the attack. And first ball, he's got it right up there and dead straight. Boy. If you're a tail ender, you don't want one of those. He tried to get the left leg down the pitch. Jason Gillespie, that's a beauty. 142 kilometres an hour. Straight, dipping in. Uh, I don't care if you're about number 10. That's hard to hit. That's superb bowling. Shoaback Tars picked up five wickets. Gillespie gone. First ball. Playing now nine for 142. Lynn McGrath is the new batsman for Australia, and he comes in to face Shoal Bakhtar who is on fire quick straight and getting some reverse swing so a pleasant time for Taylor to come into the crease that's a good hit he opens up his shoulders for the first time and cracks it straight beautifully played I've seen that's been like Shane Watson play this sort of shot Watson he's a big man a solid man which to me to be his best when he's hitting through the ball just like this using his power head nice and still well balanced he's playing like that I think he's going to be a better player big hit score more Tony finds a gap this is great for Shane Watson and his games the young guy hitting through the line didn't quite get it in the middle, but it went to the ropes. Australia got to 150. Hearing a few cheers from the crowd as well, which is good. Great for Shane Watson's confidence as well. Moving on to 36 now. Three boundaries. Let me just give you a quick word to Glenn McGrath, saying, get on your bike. You're going to get a single this ball. 37.5 bowl. Australia needs Watson to stay on strike. Well run. Keeper misses by call. 38 gone, 9 for 154. In the air, it could be six or could be out. He's under it. He's under it. He's dropped it. There, oh dear, four runs. Alec, 12th man, he's put it down. His second catch is dropped. Go over for six. Went for it. Should have been possibly six wickets. Should have caught that man. Dropped it. Four runs. The reason when you're going back, and this ball went a long way in the air. Top edge, but a lot of battle though from Shane Watson. Carried a long way. Running back with the ball. And then the end of the fingers, or another boundary for the Australians. We've seen some big hitting here today. Well, one. Actually, Rick Eels was a 
sweep them. Give it in. That's it. It's all over. The ball now for 165. Watson not out 44. A big win for Pakistan and well deserved. Yes, they fought back well, Pakistan, after taking a hammering in the first of the Tower Super Challenge matches in Melbourne. A win in the second game in Melbourne and now a very convincing win here at the Gabba. In fact, the biggest that Pakistan have ever had over Australia. So it's been a good, convincing finish to the series for Pakistan after making an ordinary start. Well, what a wonderful effort from Pakistan here at the Gabba. The three-match series goes their way 2-1. A slow start to the series, getting beaten by Australia in Game 1, but Game 2 and 3 went Pakistan's way, and deservedly slow, so an excellent effort from the whole team. Well, let's have a look how it panned out today. Pakistan, an enormous amount of confidence.